what I miss. We're talking about an earth-shattering topic, the impending return of Donald J. Trump and the international tremors that it's causing. Leaders from Tokyo to Paris and even in our own backyard in Canada are all bracing themselves for what could be a seismic shift in global politics. Wall Street Journal just dropped a bombshell. The world is contemplating a second Trump administration. Stick around because we're going to break down how Trump's likely return has global elites quaking in their boots. Plus, we'll be hearing from Viktor Orban, the president of Hungary, and even Trump himself. You'll want to hear every word, especially our final thought. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's dig into this explosive development. When Trump left office, many in the corporate media and their international counterparts exhaled a collective sigh of relief. But the calm might have been short-lived. You see, while the media has been busy sidelining Trump, painting him as a mere mugshot and an indicted former president, something else has been brewing. A sense of inevitability among world leaders that Trump could return to the highest office in the land. Wall Street Journal, not your average tabloid, mind you, published a piece indicating that allies and even adversaries are beginning to plan for Trump's comeback. They're looking at the man they love to hate, but can't ignore as a figure who can significantly reshape world politics again. And here's where the story takes a fascinating twist. While the domestic debates rage over Trump's past and future, globally, the stakes are much higher. The liberals want you to believe that Russia and China view Trump as a pawn, but Wall Street Journal reports that nationalists and populist politicians worldwide are actually rooting for Trump's return. It's not just us saying it. World leaders are essentially admitting that they need Trump. Viktor Orban, Hungary's president, echoes his sentiment. Let's play a clip from his interview with Tucker Carlson. Watch. So if you were in charge of NATO, if you were, say, Joe Biden, uh, what would your next move be in the war in Ukraine? What would you do? Beef. Immediately. Call back Trump. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only way out. Call back Trump. Call back Trump. Because, you know, you can criticize him for many reasons. I understand all the, all the discussion. But, you know, the best foreign policy of the recent several decades belong to him. He did not initiate any new war. Yes. He treated nicely the, 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 the North Koreans and, and Russia, even the Chinese, you know. He, he, he delivered a policy which was the best one for Middle, for Middle East, Abraham Accords. Yes. So, so that was a very good foreign policy. He, you know, he's criticized that he is not you know, he's not educated enough to understand the word policy. This is not the case. Facts count. And his foreign policy was the best one for the world in the last several decades I have seen. And if he would have been the president at the moment of the Russian invasion started, no, it would, it, it would be not possible to do that by the Russians. So Trump is the man who can save the Western world and the, probably the human beings in, uh, in the globe as well. Orban's words could not be clear. He calls for peace immediately, attributing the best foreign policy in recent decades to Trump. Not to Obama, not to Bush, but to Trump. He even goes as far as to say that Russia would have never invaded Ukraine if Trump were in office. That's a bold statement. Now let's compare this to Trump's take on the global situation. Watch. This month marks the two-year anniversary of the most embarrassing event in the history of our country. Joe Biden's disastrous surrender in Afghanistan. This was one of the horrible, horrible events in our country's past, leaving thousands and thousands of Americans behind. We don't even know the number. 13 dead warriors, hundreds of civilians killed and horribly wounded, including soldiers beyond the 13 soldiers that were so badly wounded. And $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment anywhere in the world, abandoned, handed over, call it what you want, to the Taliban. It was a surrender. Never before has there been such an egregious display of incompetence and weakness on the world stage. You don't bring the soldiers out first, you bring the soldiers out last, Joe. Ever since that horrendous event, the United States and the world have been paying a very steep price Russia took one look at Joe Biden's impotent and pathetic performance and decided to invade Ukraine. He would have never done it while I was president. Wouldn't have happened. China is now threatening Taiwan. Iran is on the cusp of a nuclear bomb and American allies around the globe are 
doubting American strength and cozying up to the Chinese Communist Party. It's impossible to overstate the scale of the military, diplomatic, and geopolitical disaster created by Joe Biden's Afghanistan catastrophe. History will be very harsh on Crooked Joe for a lot of reasons, but this is one of them. What is needed now is a decisive and rapid return to unquestioned, undoubted, and unrivaled American power and prestige. We had that when I was president. When I was president, we were the most respected country in the world, more respected than America ever was. Under my leadership, we were getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity and strength. We were strong and powerful, and everybody respected us, including the Taliban. When I return to the Oval Office, you will once again have an America that is feared by our enemies, trusted by our allies, and respected by everyone. All over the world, no matter who it is, they're going to respect us again. They will respect us again, and we will make America great again, and we will also put America first. We will restore peace through strength. That's the way it has to be. Thank you very much. God bless. Trump reminds us of his stance on peace through strength and points to Biden's catastrophic failure in Afghanistan as the root cause of our current international debacle. Think about it, folks. Biden's mess-ups have caused ripple effects across the world, eroding our allies' trust and emboldening our adversaries. And speaking of ripple effects, our financial future is also at stake. Look at the decline of the U.S. dollar, down 85% since the 70s. Now the government's printing money like it's going out of style, just like Biden's failed policies. Secure assets with noble gold investments, just like Trump stabilized America on the world stage. Gold can be your stable asset against inflation. Plus, they are giving away 24 karat quarter-ounce gold standard coin for free. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com or give them a call at 877-646-5347. Don't wait. Secure your financial future right now.